Drexel, the financier. So that's Bernard Drexel. Now, why have you brought me here to see him? I'll tell you in a minute. Now, please, I want to listen to the music. A music lover and a money lover. Whenever anyone compiles a list of the world's richest men, the name of Bernard Raxel is frequently included. The newspapers call him the Midas Man. <laughs> it's rumored that he could finance the entire American space program just out of petty cash. Now, why Inspector Teal has brought me here to see him, I can't imagine. Take a look at the man with Raxel. I want you to remember him. Who is he? Name's Cranter. Raxel's personal secretary. What about him? He and Raxel are planning the biggest crime in history. Shh. Interested? I'm fascinated. Where do I come in? I want you to find out what it is. Why me? Because you're the man for the job. Because you're the... Don't say it. Life would be so much more uncomplicated if I were playing Harry Brown instead of Simon Templer. <laughs> Dear chap, come in, come in. Cranter, pour Mr. Sorrell a drink. By all means. Thank you, sir. Marley said you wanted to see me. Yes. Now, let me see. When you first joined us, it was for a trial period of three weeks, wasn't it? Uh, yes, sir, that's right, yes. Yes, well, I want to tell you that we're very impressed. Very, isn't that so, Cranter? Oh, indeed, I can assure you. We've watched everything you've done with great interest. So, we've decided to end the trial period. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Does that mean my position will be permanent? Oh, very. Gentlemen, I give you a toast. To the quick demise of police informers. Well, I think that concludes our business for this morning. Once you have disposed of this gentleman, you will continue your affairs as planned. I can see the only way I can get you out of this laboratory is by brute force. Now, come on, put on your coat and go. I just want to finish these notes. Leave them to me. Okay. I'll tie up the loose ends. Now, I know you think the whole research program will collapse because you are going on holiday. But uh, somehow we'll manage. Now, come on. I know I'm being a mother hen over this project. I suppose it'll get on without me until I get back. Now, wait a minute, I better just check No, this. no, no, no. For one month, just eat and sleep, ski, drink, and when you get back, then you can come back to slave-driving us scientists. All right, Klaus, I give in. Bye-bye. Don't let them slow up while I'm away with you. Have a good holiday. Don't even bother to send a postcard. Don't worry, I won't. You've got exactly 45 minutes to get to London Airport. Come on. Our passport. Whatever happened to that ice-cold analytical brain of yours? Oh, ah, airline tickets, flowers, checks. There's a lot here. Oi. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> you dear, sweet, kind, thoughtful brother. I don't know what I'd do without you. Now, look, you just sit down there and have your nervous breakdown, and I'll take care of this lot, right? Here we go. Better call Sladden and tell him the operation has started. Is the police car in position? All right. Now, are you sure you'll recognize her? Good. Out. 
Everything's under control. This is a character you want me to impersonate? Yes, and you'll have to make up your mind quickly. His flight is due to land in less than 20 minutes. Well, as a rule, I don't mind working in the dark, but I do wish you'd shed a little more light on this particular subject. I don't know very much. Just that there's a crime in the works that makes all other robberies look like piggy bank stealing. How did you get onto it? One of my undercover men got word that Raxa was hiring top operators. Safe men, drivers, jetting nine boys. Uh, where's your undercover man now? In the morgue. I dragged him out of the river yesterday morning. This is uh, Carl Munster. He is the safe expert. The best in the world. How do you know that the people who are hiring him haven't met him? We don't. Not for sure. But we think it's unlikely. The FBI have been keeping tabs on Munster. Last week he received $10,000 and an airline ticket to London via Paris, where he's coming from now. He flew out of Kennedy Airport this morning. Claude, why do you want me to take his place? Well, they might want Munster to prove his skill with a safe. And you're the only man I know who can match him. I won't fool you about this, Simon. This could be the most dangerous thing you've ever handled. Where to, sir? 307 to Zurich, BEA. Thank you. Now, you better go and check in. I'll park the car. Oh, no, don't bother. I can make it on my own from there. Are you sure? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you for bringing me. Bye. Have a super holiday. Yes. He'll be back on the main road in about two minutes, okay? And yeah, see you back at the house. How Munster's plane gets in about now. Why didn't we take a look at it? No, nobody contacts him until we're sure he isn't being followed. Now, let's get back. I wouldn't want to miss the reception. Well, what'd you say, Simon? Heads, sir. How do we do the switch? Immigration are going to delay him. we better get on over there. They'll take him into an office. I've got a team waiting there. Make it sound so easy. Yeah, I'm glad you think so, because in the next ten minutes you've got to learn Munster's life history. Please proceed to channel number three for customs and immigration clearly. Right, fine. Thank you. Sit here, please, Mr. Templer. Ah, what's all this about? There's a few distinguishing marks you'll be needing. We can't make you look exactly like Munster, but we can make you look less like Simon Templer. Oh, this is Philip Gray. He'll brief you and act as your contact man. How oh, nice to know you. Just exactly how will we make contact? We'll each have one of these. You expect me to write and say help? It's a micro-circuit walkie-talkie. Has a range of about 100 yards. At 11 o'clock each night, I shall try to get near enough to wait for your call. Monster's flight's on the glide path. Right. You better get on with the briefing. Right, here we go. You are Carl Patrick Munster, born August the 8th, 1925, in New York City. You attended PS 84. Oh, Miss Betty Trugarth? Yes? I'm glad I got you in time. I'm a police officer. I'm afraid there's been an accident. Your brother. David? Yes, a car smash. He's not dead? No, but badly injured, I'm afraid. Well, where is he now? They've got him at the doctor's house. They don't move him to hospital yet. I've got a car waiting outside. Yes, I must get him. Uh... This way. All right, let's try it. What's your name? Carl Patrick Munster. How old are you, Carl? 39. You served any time? Two years of form school, 18 months San Quentin. They tried to book me six months ago on a grand larceny rap. They couldn't make it stick. Are you married, Carl? Nope, but I got abroad. Gloria Mancini. As a matter of fact, Sammy, she's quite a dish. Shame the picture. Yeah. Mm. It'd take more than $10,000 to drag me away from that. They've got him. They're bringing him in. This way, sir. What's going on? What is this? All right, take him. Hey, now, wait a minute. You guys got nothing on me. Don't worry, we're almost there. Look, what is this place? Where's my brother? We'll see him in a moment. Well, where are you going? Well, come back! Where are you going? Well, why do you lock the door? How long will this last? Four or five days. There's some stuff in Munster's case that you can touch it up with. Good. 
American passport. It has Munster's name, mature picture and description. What's that? It's a cologne called Wolf Whistle. Munster used it all the time. I suppose there's some of that in this case as well. Yes, there is. Oh, that's something you didn't have in your files, Claude. Munster has no sense of smell. You better get going, Simon, in case somebody's waiting to welcome you. Gray will stay as close as he can, but from here on, you're on your own. Watch yourself. Munster. You call me? Your reactions are just fine. Good luck. Well, let's decide what we're going to do with our guest. Attention, please. Will Mr. Munster, a passenger from New York, please report to the information desk. Mr. C.P. Munster, please. My name's Carl Munster, you were calling. Yes, Mr. Munster. This was left for you. Good evening, Mr. Garth. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Please don't be alarmed. You'll notice high on the wall to your left is a small television camera. It allows me to both see and hear you. If you would like to remove the dust sheet from the object over the mantelpiece, don't be afraid. Where's my brother? Why have you brought me here? Who are you? All in good time. Mr. Garth, for the past three years, you have headed a research team at International Chemicals. During that time, you have perfected a nerve gas. How do you know that? It, it's top security. Quite. As it happens, you are the only person who knows how it is manufactured. Now, you are going to make it for me. No, no, I won't. I, I, I can't do that. I did foresee a certain reticence on your part. For that reason, I have provided an inducement. David. David. What have you done to him? As yet, very little. However, if you refuse to do as I say, we can inflict on the young man a considerable amount of pain. Would you like to see? Only you can stop it, Mr. Carr. Oh, please, please don't hurt him. Then you'll do as I say. Oh, please, you must, must understand I can't make the gas. Very well. Pity. He really was quite a good-looking young man. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do as you say, only for God's sake, leave him alone. That's enough. Now, you will do exactly as I say. Please go to the small table. Lift the dust sheet. The hypodermic contains a drug which produces a state of catalepsy. I'm sure you know enough of medicine to give yourself the injection. You come along. I promise you, when you recover, you will find yourself in more attractive surroundings.
Just leave him alone. Just leave him alone. Sir, you remember? Oh, yes, of course. Mr. Munster. Your private dining room is ready, sir, if you'll follow me. Your guest has arrived already. This is cosy. Can I take your hat and coat, sir? seems kind of inadequate. I'm Madeline. Madeline? You're sure a bit shaky in hands. You're nice. That's a very sexy cologne you're wearing. I guess it must be. I knew someone else who used it. It's called man power, isn't it? Uh-uh. Woof whistle. Removes stains from clothing and makes a very palatable drink when mixed with vodka. Champagne will taste better. Incidentally, the, uh, Kissing bit was great, but you didn't have to go through all that just to find out if I was wearing a gun. Business before pleasure. But now that business is over, this is strictly for pleasure. Hey, what is this? Let's just say I'm sending you up. Good night, Mr. Munster. Hold it. Leave the gun, Mr. Munster. Pick it up. Get over to the safe. You got the scar. What's the matter? Are you crazy or something? We just want to make sure that you are Carl Munster. You calling me a liar? We've devised a simple test to establish your identity. Carl Munster is a safe expert. That's right. The best. We estimate that he could open this safe to which you've become so attached in uh, three minutes flat. It's not possible. Munster could do it. I am Munster and I know what I can and what I can't do. Three minutes, Mr. Munster. If the door is open in that time, we'll have no doubt about who you are. Well, if not... When this liquid overflows into there, it'll uh, create cyanide gas. And that'll be released three minutes from now. I need hardly mention that the only way to avoid being gassed is to open the safe door. That'll stop the gas from escaping into this room. I do hope you don't make it. We'll be back in two minutes, 50 seconds, Mr. Munster. Inside. Stay as close as you can, but don't take any chances. At some stage, you might want to have when he does, he'll need it first. Oh, don't worry. You know Templar, he's probably enjoying every minute of it. He isn't going to make it. And the gas will save us a great deal of trouble. How long has he got? 45 seconds.
Congratulations, Mr. Munster. You satisfied now? Perfectly. Unlock him. I uh, hope you haven't been too uncomfortable. Uh, oh! Oh! Joe, cross me again. It goes for you too. I wouldn't dream of crossing you. Come on, let's go. We've got a great deal to do before Wednesday. Why am I? I had hoped you'd think of a more original recovery line. However, you're in the laboratory, which will be your home for the next few days. All the equipment needed for the manufacture of Somnar nerve gas is here. Where's my brother? Safe and well, and will remain so, whilst you cooperate. To reassure you, you will be allowed to see him for a few moments each night. I want to see him now. Perhaps later. For tonight, I want you to check this equipment. Tomorrow, you will start producing the gas. Anything you want, you can get by ringing this bell. What are you going to use the gas for? To help me steal several hundred million pounds. Good night, Mr. Garth. Quite a pad you've got here. Hey, you didn't expect an organization like ours to operate from a slum tenement, did you? Ah, Mr. Munster, welcome, welcome. Nice to see you. I'm Bernard Raxo. I uh, take it you're heading this operation? That's right. So what are we going to heist? I'm afraid that will remain unanswered until tomorrow morning. Oh, well, what happens then? We hold the first full briefing session. All the stockholders will be present. I think that'll impress you. We've been able to recruit the elite of the criminal profession. Have you given Mr. Munster an agenda? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> 9 a.m. breakfasts and introductions. 10 a.m. opening address and briefing by the chairman. 12 noon, first training session. <laughs> Sounds like a summer camp but far more rewarding, I assure you. You must be tired. Crantor, will you show Mr. Munster to his room? I'm afraid I must insist that until the operation is over, you confine yourself to the house and grounds. We'll talk more in the morning. Good night, Mr. Munster. <laughs> There's something about him worries me. What does Crantor think? Well, Crantor's convinced. After all, he did open the safe, all right. Well, frankly, I don't think there's any doubt that he's really Munster. However, it never hurts to pay attention to these intuitive feelings. How else can we check on him? Oh, it's very simple. Telephone my New York office, tell them to get a first-class air ticket and deliver it with a thousand dollars to Miss Gloria Mancini. Munster's girlfriend? Exactly. No one will be able to tell better than she if he's an imposter. Come in. Uh, just checking. I have nothing for you yet. Over. Okay. I'm parked just outside the wall. Call me tomorrow if you can. Over. I can hardly hear you for the static. Can you come any closer? Over. I'll try tomorrow. Fine. I'll call you then.
Now, look, you mustn't let them force you to make this gas. Look, it's all right, David. I've decided. I'm not risking your life. You can't do it. She can and she will. Well, now, I think the purpose of this brief visit has been achieved. You can start work knowing that your brother is unharmed. Come on. Look, can't we talk for a minute? Some other time. Good night, Mr. Gunn. Betty? Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. If you will take your seats, I will call the meeting to order. First, I would like to welcome you and thank you for attending. I hope that you have found your quarters comfortable and that you have been provided with everything that you require. Ah, now to business. Mr. Crantor, will you outline the groupings? Well, basically, we'll divide into three groups. A, transport. That concerns Messrs. Arnoff, Trenton and Seibert. Uh, you'll be trained and briefed by Mr. Murray. I shall command the assault force. Sounds like the ready army. Exactly. This whole operation will be conducted on military lines. And finally, there's a technical unit. That's you, Mr. Munster. Well, on my own? Now, you can select anyone you need to help you from the assault force. And uh, Mr. Raxel himself will be in charge of your briefing. Fine. Uh, so, uh, what's this big deal? What are we going to knock over? In the past, some of you will have engaged in the not very rewarding business of forgery. You will know that to manufacture perfect plates is almost impossible. It is also impossible to obtain the special paper upon which the notes are printed. Mr. Seibert, you have done time for forgery. What would you say was your greatest difficulty? Distribution. My notes were fair copies, but you could only pass them in a crowd. Thank you. Would you have a look at that note, please? Good. Perfect. Would you have any difficulty in passing it? No. It's as good as the real thing. It is real. Gentlemen, this is what we are going to make. Millions and millions of them, identical to those made by the Bank of England. <laughs> this, this is our target. The actual plates used in the Bank of England printing works, along with the special paper and the ink. Gentlemen, we are going to make money like nobody has ever made it before. waiting for you in the mock-up strong room. Mm. You're still suspicious of him? Yes. He was out of his room last night. I put a thread on the door, and when I checked, it was broken. It doesn't really prove anything. No, maybe not, but... We'll know soon enough. New York just heard Munster's girlfriend gets in late tonight. Good. Well, I'd better get down and show him the layout. Ah, Mr. Munster, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. That's all right, I've got no place to go. <laughs> Would you mind holding that, please? Thank you. It's quite a setup. This is an exact replica of the vaults at the printing works. The safe is the same model as the one they use. The only difference is in the combination. That's where you come in. 
The plates are put in the vaults every night when they finish printing. Do I have to deal with this door on the night? No, the assault force will open that before you arrive. All you have to worry about, Mr. Munster, is this. Now, this uh, door has a time mechanism. No locksmith in the world could open it before the time it's set. The time lock is no problem. Or was that? This is a device I've had manufactured specially for the operation. As you know, the electric clock that controls the time lock is driven by impulses. Now, just a minute. If you think you're going to speed that clock up just by increasing the voltage, you're wrong. I've tried it. You're right, of course. But if the impulses are made more frequent, the electric clock will speed up. Don't worry, it's all been thoroughly tested. It's quite a gadget. With one of these, you could revolutionize the whole bank routing business. When all this is over, it's yours. However, you won't have to worry about it for the purpose of this rehearsal. Now, we've got a lot to do. We'll go through it step by step. The men will be here in an hour for the first run through. Now, are you ready? Be there on the night I. you start turning that dial. Right, that's it. We've got to get to those wires more quickly. We'll have a ten minute break, and then we'll start all over again from the beginning. That's a bit much, isn't it? We're going to go on doing this until it's absolutely perfect. Well, that last rehearsal was pretty well perfect. Like clockwork. When do we get the gas? She's filling the last four canisters now. And then we're all set. Yes. You'd better get down to the airport and collect Munster's girlfriend. Mm, that's one reunion I'm looking forward to seeing. You're out of your mind. The guy's perfectly genuine. All this worry, Marin, you'll give yourself ulcers. Well, I'll take ulcers to a 20-year stretch any time. <laughs> Come in, Simon. They're holding Betty Tregarth. Simon, I just can't hear you. Do you read me over? I can hardly hear you. You're very faint. This is no good. I'm coming over the wall. Can you meet me in the garden somewhere on the north side of the drive? Yes, I'll be down there in about five minutes. I was right about you. What are you talking about? It was in my bedroom window I saw someone moving around down here. Oh, don't give me that. Your copper friend set off the alarm when he came over the wall, so you come down here and walk straight up to him. I told you I saw someone moving around. What do you expect me to do, go quietly back to bed and hope it wasn't a cop? Look, Buster, if your security arrangements are so lousy you let a guy wander right up to the house, then I have a right to protect myself. Ah, that'll be Cranto back from the airport. Now we're really going to find out about you. Ah, I'm 
I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Miss Mancini. Good evening. My name's Bernard Rack. How do you do? Carl will be here in a moment. Oh, fine. Gee, I can't tell you how much I've missed that big slob. <laughs> now, Mr. Munster, an old friend of yours is waiting to meet you. Don't let's keep her waiting. Ah, here's Carl now. Baby. Hi, Gloria. Hey, ain't you glad to see me? Sure I am, kid. It's uh, just that I'm a little surprised. You look swell, baby. Thanks. Gee, wasn't it swell these guys to fly me over just so I could be with you? A real swell. Come on, hon, let's go someplace and talk. I'm sorry, Miss Mancini. I'm afraid I shall have to cut your reunion short. What do you mean? Another rehearsal now. No, not a rehearsal. We're bringing the whole operation forward. We hit tonight. Radio check. Come in if you hear me. Over. Section one, loud and clear. Over. Section two. You're clear. Over. Right. Stand by. Out. Hitting the ventilating system now. until it gets to 8 o'clock. Come on, come on. Say, what is this? Get your things, Miss Mancini. We're moving out. But I gotta wait for Carl. We're finished with this place now. Let's go. But Carl's expecting me to be There's no time for explanations now, Miss Mancini. Move.
guns in the truck, we'll dispose of them on the way back. Now, line up here. Listen to me. Now, Kranz, off! Tear up a few loose ends, rid ourselves of the Tregarth and that Mancini woman, and we're on our way. We can start rolling off the money in a couple of hours. Nothing can stop us now. If I could only get my hands free. Oh, David, you're wasting your time. They can see everything we do in that television camera up there. Good evening. As we're to part company quite soon, I thought you might be interested to see what your invaluable help has achieved. Exquisite, isn't it? Our presses will be turning these off by the millions, complete with watermark, metal strip, everything. Very interesting. Let's put that on the floor, Marion. Now, I'll kick it over this way. How did you get here, Mansa? Well, let's start using real names. Mine's Simon Templer. I knew it. But the girl? Gloria Mancini was picked up at the airport, just the same as Carl Munster was. I deputized for her. Then I was right. That guy who came over the wall was a cop, and you were going to meet him. Yes, Philip Gray. You'll answer for his murder. <laughs> To admit you have a great facility for arriving just after the next time. You'll be congratulated, Simon. It's rather a good haul. We picked up the whole lot of them at the printing works. The hospital says they'll be unconscious for days. And wake up with terrible headaches. I thought the nerve gas was a killer. Yes, it is. But I reduced its strength. The effect looked the same. Oh, well, that seems to tie it all up. Good, then. We'll uh, be off. Oh, well, there's just one more thing. Yeah, bombs, poison gas, I can face them all, but uh, the sight of Claude used to steal with money to burn's too much for anybody. Good night, Claude. <laughs> 